Hey guys, it's Smashley. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if it's your first time. And if it's your first time, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'm joined also by Daniel, AKA King Greatness, AKA my husband. We are knee deep in decorating our house for Halloween. It is so real in the Goalie Bart household right now. And we decided we wanted to deck out our high ceiling ledge in our living room all with DIY Stranger Things decor. We will be splitting the ledge into two different concepts. First up, we're gonna be creating the iconic alphabet wall made by Joyce Byers in season one of Stranger Things. And on the other side, we're gonna be doing our own rendition of the upside down with DIY Demogorgons included. For the alphabet wall, we've actually had this idea for literal years. I think it was after season one, maybe, we went to Salvation Army and we thrifted a flat sheet that had a similar pattern to the wallpaper that was in the buyer's living room. And here it is. So to give you guys an idea, obviously we're not gonna be painting letters on our real wall and we're also not gonna be putting up wallpaper. So this was a really great alternative. This is what we're gonna be painting all of our letters of the alphabet on. We started off by measuring the wall where we're actually gonna hang this just to see if there was any cuts that we need to make. The wall measured out about eight feet wide and so is the blanket. So it literally turned out perfect. The only thing was we'll have a little bit of slack at the bottom, but we'll probably just lay it right on the ledge and you won't even see it. So I'm gonna get set up and we will start with the letters. So I took the sheet outside just so I could lay it completely flat and start to paint on the letters. I started off with the middle row, um, which is doing the Q and the I first, just because I knew it was gonna be three rows of letters and we wanted them to be um, pretty centered on the wall. So I just measured, I wanna say maybe six, seven inches down from the top and then I kind of did that same margin on each of the sides. Um, and then by doing the I and the Q first, it kind of just helped me figure out how much space I had left for the top and the bottom row. We are ready to start our DIY Demogorgons. I'm actually going to start with the teeth first. <laughs> and using this Model Magic clay, we're going to mold each individual tooth. I know it sounds crazy, we need approximately a million, is what we counted. Um, just kidding, no, we're making two Demogorgon heads. They're gonna have five petals each, so we need enough teeth to kind of fill all of those up. And we have these just regular paper plates. We figured, we made two sheets already, and we figured that the size of each of the plates is enough for one petal, so we have to make 12 plates of teeth. So that's as much math as I wanna do today. Because if you guys haven't worked with Model Magic before, all it is is air drying clay. We're going to cheat a little bit. So I have some cookie sheets with some parchment paper in front of us. We read online that if you put it in the oven at super low temperature, would they crack just a little, that they can dry faster. So since we're filming this in the interest of time, we figured that would be the fastest way to get this done. We're gonna be making teeth of literally every single shape and size. I want them to look really creepy, very Demogorgon-like. So I just have like these little clay tools we're gonna use to kind of cut and shape them. I started out by rolling out a long strip of clay and then we just cut out little triangles and that served as the foundation for each of the teeth. From there we were able to kind of just mold them with our hands in all different shapes and sizes. We spent maybe a couple of hours just making the teeth, but so worth it. I picked up these two night helmets literally from the dollar store and you guys are probably looking at me like I'm nuts. My idea and inspiration when I saw these was to remove this piece and use this as the main piece of the Demogorgon's head. So I really liked how it was already ho hollow and it already is gonna give us kind of that depth that we're looking for to add all of the teeth on the inside. And for $1, you cannot beat that price. So we're just gonna remove the face guard from the helmet on these. So essentially, this is what we're looking like. Perfect. And we're gonna have all of the teeth lined up in here. I'm gonna set these aside. We are gonna set these aside and we're gonna move on to the petals. I just created 
like a little bit of a stencil for us. And I'm saying petals, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's the things coming out from the Demogor Demogorgons. For lack of a better term, I'm gonna call them petals. Because that's, that's what they look like to me. So I went and I just made these stencils. So that's what we're gonna use to go by. And then I have this 12 gauge wire we just picked up at Michael's. It's a little thick, but I like it because it's bendable. So I can actually kind of bend the petals inward, um, similar to how the real Demogorgons are. So we can get going with that. For this, you'll of course need the 12 gauge wire. I also have a wire cutter. This is what we're gonna use once we've had our shape down. Okay, and we get about five yards out of each of these, so this should be just enough. So once you have your shape, which I do here, just gonna cut this. And at the bottom, the bottom piece here, we're just gonna twist it. This is what we're gonna be gluing on the back of the helmet to make sure that the petals stay on. So you just wanna leave a little bit of slack at the end. And then, um, like I mentioned earlier, each of the demo organs are gonna have about five petals. So I created five different shapes. I just wanted it to look as authentic as possible. Um, but you can create whatever shapes you want. If you wanna do all the same shape, you totally can. Once you have all of your wire petals shaped, they should look something like this, again, with the little twists at the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and grab some really thick masking tape, and we are going to cover the petal completely. This is gonna give us a foundation to paint, to build off of, to give us some texture, and to attach the teeth. So we're gonna start with just one base layer of covering the petal completely. You want to do this gently because, again, the wire does move. We want to keep the shape, so just make sure you're careful when you put the tape on. That's what it'll look like once it's completely finished. So see, they look like petals for now. And you want to do them for all five per Demogorgon you're doing. Once you have all your petals completely covered in masking tape, the next step is gonna be adding texture. So we picked up some packaging paper and we just made some little crumples of them <laughs> and added it to the petal and then covered that in some more masking tape and you wanna make sure that's covered completely. Ultimately, like this is what we're going for. So it's gonna give us that depth, that texture that we want, and we're gonna be painting directly on this. So we'll finish up the other four and move on to the next step. I should also make mention, we're only doing it to the front. No one's really gonna see the back of the petals. So I'm just adding texture to the one side. Next, I had the idea to just add some hot glue around the rim. I noticed in a lot of pictures of the Demogorgons, as close up as I could get, they had like this skin light, like outline almost to each of the petals. So I decided to kind of just emulate that with some hot glue. So we'll do that next. And it really doesn't have to be perfect. I almost prefer it to be a little messy, but can you guys see kind of what we added around the sides? So we'll do that to all the petals. Next was my personal favorite part, which was painting. We used some crimson red, mixed that with some white for that pink fleshy tone we added around the sides. And then of course we added some black for depth in the middle of the petals as well as the center of the inside of the helmet so we could have some depth for the um, Demogorgon mouth. Next we added this grayish color mixed between gray and beige on the backs of the helmets as well as the back of each of the petals. The Demogorgons are actually that gray fleshy looking color. So remember all of those teeth that we spent time making earlier? This is how they turned out. We had just plates on plates of teeth 
And the next piece is obviously just going to be hot gluing them directly to each of the petals that we've made to prep them to put them to put our demo corking together. On the inside of the helmet, we started to add several different rows of teeth. Again, that's gonna be the mouth part of the Demogorgon, so we wanted to show even more depth by adding almost rows of teeth like you would see with sharks. We really liked how these are turning out. The same way that we added that outline of hot glue on the petals, I did decide to add them around the bottom part of the jaw. Wanted to give the illusion of some drool and some nastiness going on, so it worked out. The next part was to really just attach all the petals that we finished making onto the back of the helmet. We used um, some hot glue and a combination of some more masking tape just to hold everything in place. And we did that for all five petals all the way around the helmet, AKA the mouth, and it really started to come together. Now that everything is finally completed, um, my husband went ahead and just jumped on top of the ledge where we were gonna set this up and started to hang the alphabet wall first. So of course we just kind of pinned that in each of the corners. He actually used a staple gun for this. We figured it was gonna need way too many screws or nails or anything like that. And the staples would be a little bit less invasive. And for the lights themselves, we actually measured out on the floor first about which lights we wanted to have above each of the letters. And we just removed the light cap or the colored light cap for the ones that we did not need. But I think we ended up using two strings of the colored lights and it, it literally worked out perfectly. Now for the other side of the wall, that's gonna be our version of the upside down. So we thought it would be really cool to just use some black trash bags. We cut the sides so that they would lay flat against the wall. And then again, using the staple gun, we just hung up, I wanna say maybe three to four trash bags it took to cover the space. As we went along, we decided to add in the Demogorgon heads. I wanted to make sure those were placed on the wall before we put up anything else. So we added one kind of a little bit higher and the other one a little bit lower, both pretty much centered to the wall or the space that we wanted. And for these, we did use a screwdriver. Um, and we just ended up putting, I want to say maybe three screws in the center of the mouth and we painted the tops of the screws black so you can't tell at all. To add some depth and texture to the wall, I picked up a bunch of the creepy cloths from the dollar store. I got them in black and gray and we just draped them across the wall, again, to kind of give it that upside down feel where everything's kind of hanging off the walls and things like that. And then we also decided to add in some purple lights. There was a scene where they had some twinkle lights kind of going on there. I think it was when Barb was stuck in the upside down and I just had it in my head. But of course I wanted to keep it black and dark and elusive. Um, so the purple lights that we had happened to work out perfectly. Well, you guys, that's all we have for today's video. We really hope that you guys enjoyed watching us make all of these DIY Stranger Things decorations for Halloween. As always, leave us a comment in the section below. Let us know which of the projects was your favorite. And if you'll be recreating anything on the Stranger Things side yourselves this season. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next one.